Hey, what's up guys? Coach Austin here. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about choosing exercises for muscle growth. Now, this is going to be an introduction into this topic. One reason why I wanted to break it up into two videos, one being learning in more bite-sized pieces, it becomes more digestible in terms of the totality of the information. And two, I wanted to actually give you an opportunity to watch this video, give me feedback, give me questions, give me things that you may have been curious about or wanted to learn more about in a follow-up video or a second video. And that's what I'm going to base the next step of this topic on. Okay. So as you're watching through this video, not only pay attention, but maybe jot down some questions as you're jotting down notes, where are there holes? Where are there gaps in your knowledge base currently? Go ahead and comment that below and I'll take that into consideration heading into the next video. Let's dive in. So the first thing, what is exercise selection? Exercise selection is simply the exercises that we are choosing to perform most effectively achieve a goal stimulus or stress during your training, right? Usually this is going to be something of targeting a specific muscle tissue, right? Or a specific muscle, let's say the chest or the quads. Finding exercises that work well for you, your skill level, your structure, your mechanics, alongside your goal is important for maximizing your training experience and muscle growth potential. Which leads us into why choose certain exercises over others? What equipment do you actually have available? That's an important question. And that's a question that we actually ask our clients. One of the first ones we ask our clients when it comes to their training is what equipment do you have available, right? Because if we don't have pieces of equipment available or even access to certain types of equipment, i.e. cables, machines, or dumbbells, if we only have access to barbells or resistance bands, well, that's going to change the next decisions that we make. Okay, so what equipment do you actually have available? Are you training at a home gym that is limited in equipment or are you training in a fully equipped gym with everything you can imagine? This is going to inform our decisions and create some potential exclusion criteria around things that we can or cannot choose to perform from an exercise selection standpoint. Next, what best fits your structure? We're going to go deeper and deeper into this. What do you prefer, actually prefer performing in your training? Now, if you don't have much training history, if you're just getting into strength training, that's one thing. Okay. And honestly, if you're finding this video early on in your journey, that's fantastic because we're going to go into how much you should even care about some of these things as a beginner. Okay. But if you do have more training experience or training history as a strength trainee, then we can get into training history and personal preference. What's worked in the past? What have you enjoyed? Right? What do you prefer performing? And lastly, does it match our goal? So the first one was, what equipment do you actually have available? Are you working out at home with very limited equipment, as we mentioned before? Or are you working out at a gym that's fully equipped, right? All of this does come into play. And again, this is why we ask our clients here at Physique Development, one of the first questions we ask them when it comes to their training is, hey, what do you have available? What kind of gym do you train at? And we even get photos and video of that training space to ensure that we can program things specifically when it comes to their exercise selection. Because again, it doesn't help us much if we don't have access to the exercises that are actually in the program, right? So the equipment you have will absolutely dictate the exercises you ultimately will be able to choose, perform, and progress over time. Next one was what best fits your structure? Your structural limitations may alter the exercises that work best for you. Now, I wanted to give an example of longer legs and shorter torso versus a longer torso and shorter legs when it comes to the barbell back squat. So if you are someone that has a more extreme structure to physique, you're extremely tall, you're extremely short, you have extremely long arms, et cetera, you may have to start limiting or creating exclusion criteria around exercises that best fit your structure. The next one's going to be, what do you prefer performing? Now, this is one that I think has lost some zest over the years with new education coming out, new research coming out, and 
new pressures on social media to sort of form to the new age of strength training and specifically training for muscle growth. We need to keep in consideration our enjoyment of lifting, our enjoyment of going to the gym, our enjoyment of not overcomplicating everything and our enjoyment of things that may bring us some nostalgia or just be things that we actually prefer to perform at the gym, right? And so the first thing we need to look at beyond your enjoyment of a lift is going to be, does it actually work for the goal? Because if it doesn't work specifically for the goal that we're trying to do, then I may advise you to alter your selection of an exercise, ensuring that it actually does lend a hand towards progressing your goal forward, right? So if our goal is to grow the quads, I'd really like an exercise to challenge the quads, right? That we're actually choosing to perform. Okay, so let's say that you've chosen an exercise. Let's say the back squat, you notice you really love the barbell back squat and you notice that it does wonders for your leg training. You notice that when you omit or take away the barbell back squat, that your leg training tends to suffer and your leg growth diminishes. I'm one of those individuals. I've, I've taken time off of the barbell back squat because I wanted to explore other options. I wanted to explore how I could progress my hack squat or my leg press or maybe my split squat strength or my step up strength or my walking lunge strength, let's say. But one thing I did notice is regardless of my preference, the barbell back squat time and time again shows up to be a successful piece of my leg training. Now, luckily, I do actually enjoy performing the barbell back squat, and it's something I'm actually quite strong at. So I don't personally mind that I got to have it in there, but it is one of those things that there was a time where I didn't prefer to perform, right? So I omitted it, but I noticed, hey, it's actually good for my goal of building up my legs. So maybe I should put it back in, right? So did it work for my goal? Yes, of growing my legs, absolutely. Did I enjoy performing it and progressing it? Luckily, I do. And the last thing here is can you actually progress that movement over time, right? There are some movements, let's say some more obscure movements. Let's, for example, let's say a barbell hack squat. This is a movement that may feel all right for you. It may be something that you enjoy exploring, but to be honest, it's probably not the best use of our time based off of how we can actually progress a movement and the fact that there's better movements that you may enjoy to perform a little bit more that's actually more directly related towards progressing your goal forward. Okay, so all these things are things you need to keep in mind when choosing exercises for a training program. Does it match our goals and program design? Now, this is the last one here within this little section of the video. So again, does it work for your goal? This is a very important piece of the puzzle and that's why I've repeated it. If your goal is to build muscle, it's important that we're performing things that work for set goal. Is it an exercise you can perform well? This is one thing that I think is very important. Is it not only complementary to your program design, but is it actually a movement that you can perform well, right? And if you're in a phase where you have time or you've given yourself time to learn a new movement or maybe progress your form or improve your form in a movement, then more power to you. But if you're in a current phase and you're trying to decide between two movements, one, you can perform quite well, you have a high level of skill within, and the other, you don't. I would personally choose, if you are going through a dedicated phase of building muscle, I would prefer that you choose the one that you have more skill at because that's going to allow you to progress that movement more with less time agonizing over learning a new movement. Again, important for our time spent towards effective exercise selection. And the last one on this is can you actually recover from it? And this comes from a look at every week we have to perform a certain amount of training volume at a certain amount of training frequency. 
something that we'll cover more in depth in a different video, but something that's important to mention when it comes to exercise selection. Specifically, does it match our goal of building muscle, right? Because if we're performing, I think for example, one exercise we can point out here is something like a barbell hack squat or maybe a zercher squat, things that are kind of awkward to perform and may leave you pretty trashed after performing them at a certain threshold of volume and or frequency throughout the week, it may not be the best selection long-term for your ultimate growth when looking at muscle. Okay, so can we perform something that we can recover from time and time again, week by week, month by month, with progressive overload attached to it? Something to keep in mind, right? Exercise selection, again, is simply the exercises you are choosing to perform to most effectively achieve a goal, stimulus, stress, on set intended muscle group in your training. Usually, again, this is specific to training certain muscle groups or regions of the body. So let me ask you these four questions again to end this video. Do you have the proper equipment for the exercises you're choosing to perform? Do those exercises fit your structure? Do you enjoy performing those exercises? And do those exercises ultimately match your goals? All things to consider when choosing exercises for effective program design if your goal is building muscle. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It does help us out a ton and it gets you access to hundreds of other free videos and exercise tutorials on our YouTube channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps. And over the course of this video, if any questions popped up or are there any knowledge gaps within your notes, please do comment them below. This will directly inform, yes, you can directly inform the next video that I create on this topic by commenting below and letting me know what you want to learn more about. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Coach Austin. See you guys in the next video.